Are you one of the many people who don't really know whether God exists or not? Did you know that we now have an entire emerging generation of people who are learning that there is no God? They hear it in the classroom. They hear it from scientists. You know, almost every documentary seems to reinforce the fact that we just evolved. But then on the other hand, there are those who insist that if you really seek God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength, you'll find him. They say that his signature is found in nature, his handiwork in the design of the universe, his presence in the laws that seem to hold everything together. And so this now begs the question, who or what do you believe? Where is the truth in all this? I mean, do you really know who you are? Are you just an accident in time having just evolved? Or were you wonderfully and awesomely created? It is a question that's an age-old question, and it's one that really deserves an answer. To do this, let's go back some 2,000 years ago and listen to a conversation that was just as relevant back then as it is today. It might help us to give us just a little bit of understanding how we might see things. There was a man named Andrew who found his brother Simon and he excitedly told him, We have found the Messiah! Now what he in effect said was, We have found our destiny. We have found our future. We have found the Saviour. We have found the truth. The focus of every prophecy, the hope of every dreams, everything that our ancestors longed for. That's what he said when he said, we have found the Messiah. Now news of this travelled fast. A man named Philip told his friend Nathaniel the specifics. He said, we have found the one whom Moses wrote about in the book of the law and whom the prophets also wrote about. He is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. These Hebrew men lived by the writings of the scriptures. They believed in God. And all those scriptures seemed to focus in on the promise of a coming Messiah. And so the question on their hearts were, when might he come? Who might he be? When and so forth. And those questions were in the hearts and minds of many throughout the ages. Remember, these men were no fools. They read the scriptures and suddenly they joined the dots because Jesus matched every prophecy, every scriptural nuance. He was the Messiah down to the very last detail. Now, while we may think that we have found the big answers to life, to those questions that seem to linger, that we have perhaps, let's say, found God or conversely, that we've proved that there is no God, well, let's not be too quick to think that we found anything at all. There is another perspective in all this that's worth considering, and it's one that changes everything. You see, the disciples thought that they, they had found the Messiah. Well, that's the way they saw it. The truth, however, was that the Messiah found them. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you. So the God who created everything, the God who sustains everything, the entire creation by the power of his word, entered the world as a human seeking to save the lost. So what happened was that God came to find us. And in the process, he made himself totally human. That's something about God. God is not absent. God's not mysterious or disconnected. He made himself available for you and me so that the people of the day could see him, they could touch him, they could eat with him. And we have those testimonies today. Of and by ourselves, we can't find God. We can't come to the truth by ourselves through our own reasoning and intellect. We may see, however, and appreciate the design factor in the world around us. And we may also attribute that to a higher intelligence. But we cannot find God on our own. 
Now, the opposite is also true. We can't hide from God. Remember in the book of Genesis, that's exactly what Adam sought to do by hiding in the bushes when he sinned. And so what did God do? God came graciously walking in the cool of the evening and he called out to Adam, Adam, where are you? Did Adam think that he could play hide and seek with God? Could God not find him? That's why God called out to him. Or did God call out to him because the all-loving, merciful, kind God is prepared to enter the world and communicate with us on terms that we might understand? You see, the panorama of Scripture gives quite a different perspective of what reality really looks like as opposed to how we experience the things on ground zero here on earth. God tells us, for example, that he knew us before the foundation of the world. How is that so? Well, I don't know. But when you consider the reality of who God is and what he says of himself, suddenly we become aware that God is so much more bigger and so much more awesome that we could ever imagine. Long ago before we were born, we were on God's mind. We are not accidents. God loves us so intentionally and so intimately that he tells us that he even knows the very number of hairs on our head. And so if God seeks us out through his own wisdom and timing and choosing, well, the next question that we can ask is, what is our part in all this? What about the scripture that says, if you seek God with all your heart, you will find him? What is this seeking God with all our heart? Well, God asks us for a start to listen to him, to listen for him. Jesus implores us when he repeatedly in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, when he says to us, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says. Now, the problem we have is too often we inadvertently allow a cacophony of other competing sounds to drown out the signature words of God, that still small voice that might be calling our attention. You see, in our world today, there's always something happening. There's the music on the radio, for example, the hum of traffic, the drama on television, the excitement of sports. There's nothing wrong with these of them by themselves, but all these and more often combine to prevent us from really hearing what's important. You see, in today's world, we've largely lost the art of silence and solitude. Instead, our perceptions in this age and culture are bombarded. We are literally drowning in a tsunami of competing images and noises and experiences. And the problem with that is, as a result, many of us simply dismiss or fail to recognize God's call. And so we, are, we become immersed in images and sights and sounds that become deceptive, such as glamour, fashion, wealth status, self-determination, or whatever tends to beguile us and take us down on a completely different path. For those, however, who hear God's call, who have found God, well, so to speak, we all come to a realization that without God, we are really nothing at all. We didn't really find the great answers to life by our own intellect and reasoning, no. God took the initiative. It was God who first called us. Just think about it. Every physical aspect of our lives totally depend on him. We drink his water. We breathe his air. We go about our daily lives because of his ultimate providence. Think about the chances of life having just evolved by itself on this small, unique blue planet suspended just the right distance from the sun. It's impossible, and to believe as much is absolutely ridiculous. No, our lives are a miracle, and our lives only come together as a result of God's purpose, His calling, and His timing. And all we need to do is to stop, 
to listen, to hear, and then to respond. Jesus says again in the last book of the Bible, he said, Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If any hear my voice and open the door, I will come into their house and eat with them, and they will eat with me. If you have ears then, listen to what the Spirit says. Can you hear Jesus knocking? Can you hear his beckoning call in your life? You know, Jesus won't come in uninvited. He won't push in, but he will knock. And our response is to grab the proverbial doorknob and fling the door wide open. You know, in the end, we might do well to learn from one of history's great sages who understood that God is truly and only the initiator of our relationship with him. Job pondered when he said, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service I will wait till my change comes. You shall call and I will answer you. Did you catch it? There it is again. God initiating the calling and the faithful responding. Those who say there is no God need only wait until that day. God says in that day of resurrection, then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. Just think about it. Those who have lain silently asleep in their graves, perhaps for thousands of years, their bodies have turned to nothing but dust, will suddenly hear the voice of God. Believers and unbelievers will be woken to a fully conscious and functioning life. It will be a miracle no one can refute. That day, says Scripture, every knee will bow, everyone will become a believer. Imagine a time when there are no more lies, no more deception, no more simply just not knowing who you are. This is really the best, most wonderful news we could ever understand. Now the question of course remains, are we going to listen to God? Or are we going to continue to pretend that He doesn't exist at all? For the Message Week team, I'm John Classic. May you not only hear the call of God in your life, but also come to know that you are dearly loved.